everybody? Can you hear me talking? Okay, don't make fun of me. Okay. Hello, welcome to a video that I'm filming in my bathtub. Why? I don't know. But I have some potential reasons. Reason number one. It's dark outside and this is the best lighting in my home. Reason number two, I live in a studio apartment and Cody's watching Star Wars. Reason number three, um, sometimes you just have to roll with your creative geniuses. Dog, today we're here to talk about my favorite books that I read in 2020. Uh, what? Stop. My 19 top favorite books of 2019. Does that sound right? Oh, this dog. My dog has like a fear of closed doors or something. So we're gonna talk about the 19 books that I loved the most this year. I'm just gonna go in no particular order, but I will give a little highlight to uh, the my top five, five top five favorites. Uh, and for each book, I'm going to mention three things, maybe less, maybe more, we'll see, that uh, the book delivered to me that made it a unique experience that I truly loved. Okay? How's that sound? Good. Good. I'm glad. So let's start with Bloom by Kevin Panetta. Graphic novel. Oh, I will go in categories. First category, graphic novels. Bloom by Kevin Panetta. Three things I loved about this were the color scheme, monochromatic, dual chromatic color schemes. Two, soft gay boys. Three, family, a nice family. Nice family and small town, nice fam small town family. That's all one. Okay. Next, Hardstopper by Alice Oseman. <clears throat> soft gay boys <laughs> uh dynamic side characters and relatability saga by brian k vaughn i read volumes one through nine so this is all of them all together what did i like about this um a relentlessly a relentless experience the vivid colors and the development of our main character slash narrator next blue is the warmest color by julie moreau um hard hitting um, a darker side of queer relationships. Um, a complicated family dynamic. Favorite graphic novel. Top five, top five, here we go. Mooncakes by Suzanne Walker and Wendy Zhu. Chu. Soft queer relationships witches nice grandmas moving on to fantasy okay yeah first the lost coast by amy rose capetta witchy queer foggy atmosphere nama by sarah blake here we go top five i didn't expect this to make it into my top five but here we are sitting in my bathtub talking about nama by Sarah Blake. Um, a retelling of sorts, but with a completely new spin on it. Uh, queer is all heck. And mm, uh, entire chapters that were, that were her dreams, dream chapters. Yeah. Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Wan. Um, queer. Uh, very symbolic of the systematic oppression that we 
that currently exists in a our modern world told in a fantastical world. Three. Um, um, the bad guy dies. Then we have Fancy, the trilogy by Nadia Graf Okorfer. Um, the story is the writing is Nieri Akorfer's Horcrux. This is a piece of her soul in this book. I like that. Uh, the character development with the history of Nieri's background written in, to, in an actual tribe of Africa written in to this, a fantastical story. Amazing. Three. Um, the worlds, world, yes, fantastical worlds, but also the realistic worlds with fantastical elements. <laughs> I don't know, I have to feel like I have to go so fast. Next, Once in Future by Amy Rose Capetta and Corey McCarthy. Um, the LGBTQIAB plus representation, the space element, <laughs> and another retelling. The Deep. By Rivers Solomon. Um, a queer relationship. A queer interspecies relationship. I freaking love that. I've talked about this before, but like two consensual beings. I'm here for <laughs> mermaids, kind of. And again, a story that Rivers wrote with a piece of their history, with a piece of their soul in this story. Next, literary fiction, or just fiction. I don't know what to call this. Um, I think, I don't know, fuck. It's like, okay, we're just gonna go into it. Oh, I forgot to say, The Deep, one of my top fives. That was number, number three of the five. Okay. Where the Force Meets the Stars by Glandy What by Glendy Vander Ruh. Glendy Vander. The evolution of a relationship that doesn't fix the fit the box of normality. So much character growth. Um a mystery of whether or not someone is an alien. Next, On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vong. Here's number four of my top five. Uh, what did I love about this? It is so raw. It is so vulnerable. Um, it is the most poetic shit I've ever read, and I read a lot of poetry. It is, um, heart-wrenching, okay? <laughs> then, Johnny Appleseed by Joshua Whitehead. This is indigenous, an indigenous story. This is queer. This is heart-wrenching. Mm -hmm. Then, ooh, we have The Last True Poets of the Sea by Julia Drake. I'm going to be talking a lot about this here in a little bit when my Shakespeare wrap-up comes out. This is Julia Drake. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> this is a retelling. This is of Shakespeare, Twelfth Night. This is queer. This is has an amazing brother-sister relationship. Mm. It's kind of all about sibling relationships, and I love it. Then, let's get into nonfiction. Coming up hot, my fifth top five favorite book of the year, Pleasure Activism by Adrian Marie Brown. This was mm, unapologetic. This was eye-opening on so many levels and this was the most inclusive thing I've ever read in my entire life. Pleasure Activision. Activism. <laughs> I forgot to mention now we're in nonfiction. Nonfiction. Pleasure Activism. Then uh, Real Queer America. Stories of LGBT. LGBT stories from Red States by Samantha Allen. This is um, road trip style. <laughs> uh, small town communities that are beautiful and taking something that we think is one thing and then 
telling you that it's fucking not. And then we have my favorite poetry collection, only one. Um, but I think we're coming up on number 19. And that is, did I mention everything? Yeah. Eyes Bundle Dark with a Mouthful of Flowers by Jake Skeet. I cut off the name, but I think it's Jake Skeets. Um, this was vulnerable. This was, mm, I can't say it's poetic because it is poetry, but it's very poetic poetry. Um, this was symbolic and this was, again, just so raw, so emotional and queer. So, okay. So, um, <laughs> those are the things that I love in books, I guess. Those are my top 19 books of 2019, and I really hope that you enjoyed them. I feel like I should film, like, six more videos with this stellar setup. Maybe I'll film one more, but this one's over. <laughs>